FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. I think I have more books from our next guest than I do anybody else that's on my bookshelf. Her latest, Never Trust a Liberal Over Three, especially a Republican. Ann Coulter joins us on the program. Ann, always a pleasure. Good afternoon to you. Thanks. Great to be here, Dana. You were making killer points the other night on Hannity discussing the whole Martin Bashir, Alec Baldwin and the battle over speech. And you pointed out that our side uh, really does not have any business adopting these sort of police speech uh, policies that the left always uses. We shouldn't be adopting the same thing to try to make a point against against them. And I was shocked that there was people on our side that even disagreed with you over that. I don't get it. (laughs) I think I agree agree with you more than any other conservative in the entire movement, Dana. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) I made my day. I'm always expecting to have to explain or argue, but no, we're always on the same page. Yeah, we're not the speech police. We consider, I mean, I've always had this sense that there is a certain amount of moral opprobrium every human is born with. And normal people, i.e. conservatives, we express our moral opprobrium toward things like adultery, um, promiscuity, lying, abortion. Liberals condemn none of those things. So instead, all of their moral outrage has to bubble up over certain words, the un-PC words. And yeah, it's true if a conservative had done what Alec Baldwin did, liberals would be going crazy. But I don't think it's to our advantage to adopt the left's worldview by going after Alec Baldwin, both for something he's doing in his private life. I mean, it's usually mm. liberals who are, you know, they disagree with you on, on um, you know, the capital gains tax, and the next thing you know, they're looking through your garbage um, <laughs> to expose you as, as some sort of, you know, perverted creep. Um, here you have these paparazzi, I hate them, going after Alec Baldwin in a stalker case, I hate them, um, and, and he's cursing at this guy. I mean, there's no reason to think that this photographer either was gay or if he was, that Alec Baldwin had any idea that he was. He was grabbing, I mean, the curse words, adjectives that preceded the word fag were a lot worse than fag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all accepting here this is a curse word. But I just hate conservatives jumping on this word police bandwagon. This this doesn't hurt the left. We're buying into their worldview. Exactly. And it just, it seems to me that it makes our job easier to point out the, this, the awfulness of progressive and when you have folks like all these people saying, well, Martin Bashir should be taken off air and Alec Baldwin should be suspended from MSNBC indefinitely. And I love MSNBC because it's like the go to place for ad content for our side. And I don't know why we would change that. <laughs> yes. Yes, though, I, I really would like to have been in the room to hear the discussion <laughs> when they were deciding to hire Martin Bashir. Is oh, that gosh. a good get? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Michael Jackson, that's his claim to fame. That's it. I found it creepy to watch him even before he came up with this <laughs> stomach-churning thing about someone vom- or, uh, uh, rather defecating into Sarah Palin's mouth. Um, I really think this just proves my point about Martin Bashir, that he, is, he has no center, he has no soul, he just desperately wants to keep a job. And, and by the way, I think we have some on our side who are the same way. So when, when you know, they're thrown something new, they don't really know how to behave. They're trying to, you know, how would a crazy liberal behave in this circumstance? It's not like it comes from, from genuine moral outrage. Um, you know, it's like having a child walk onto a construction site. No, no, don't touch the dynamite. Um, and that's what I always feel like when I'm watching both Martin Bashir and Chris Matthews. I think the MSNBC suits could go to either one of them, um, you know, call the staff together. Okay, we're going, we've decided we'd have higher ratings. We're going all no- Nazi. Um, Rachel Maddow would quit. Lawrence O'Donnell would quit. And Matthews and Bashir would be fighting for their offices. Uh, all Nazi, that's fine. <laughs> all Nazi all the time, MSNBC. There you have it. No, uh, no, and I, comp- I, I, I just, I liked the points that you made uh, that were on here. And I wish, I think some on our side, they're starting to wake up a little bit more. And this is something, of course, that you highlight in your in your book as well. Never trust a liberal over three, especially a Republican. We just, this, it, it's to our detriment to adopt these sorts of policies. I mean, I, I they just, they're walking PSAs. Let them live. Let them, <laughs> yeah. Let's just let it go. Uh, I want to ask you about this latest shift in the Senate, these, the votes uh, to sort of quasi in the filibuster, I guess, for the lack of a better way to put it. Um, I'm watching currently as Mitch McConnell 
uh, is and there's a lot of discussion about Mitch McConnell on the right, but there a lot of folks are blaming Mitch McConnell for Harry Reid being able to change the filibuster rules. And this is just one more reason why everybody needs to go after Mitch McConnell. And it's I do not understand this strategy. <laughs> and here the Senate Democrats did something really stupid. We could really go after them on this. But instead, we're going to turn around and attack our own side. No, and I, I mean, if you're going to blame anyone for this, you know, blame ourselves by allowing the Democrats to get a majority in the Senate. And it's not going to help to be attacking senators up for election next year, as you and I have discussed. Let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's skip our own guys and, and train our fire on their guys. Very important midterm elections. Obviously, the Democrats think uh, Republicans are situated to pick up a lot of seats, probably mm. because of Obamacare, and I think we are. We could get seats that we're not even thinking about. Although, as far as I can tell, you and I are only are the only ones thinking about the seats we can pick up in North Carolina, Louisiana, yeah. Louisiana Montana, West Virginia. Um, I want to get Al Franken, and, and we've got to take out Mark Pryor. There's a great guy, guy, Republican running against him, Tom, Tom Cotton. That's all I want to talk about. Um, I just saw this item on Breitbart uh, attacking Mitch McConnell. And like all of the attacks on Mitch McConnell, it's always these, like, whispers in back rooms and elements of, of the conversation. The allegation is that he said tea partiers, but that part isn't in quotes. That's the paraphrase of someone who understood him to say this. Tea partiers are bullies who need a punch in the nose. Um, I strongly suspect mm. he was talking about the fake tea party or running against him. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm thinking as well, because that is and there's a lot that can be said over that particular candidate. And I, I get very I just I'm ter- we've and like you said, we've talked about this, too. I'm terrified that we are going to trip over ourselves and we're going to completely lose this seat. And then somehow grassroots will be blamed for it all over again. I don't even understand. I mean, it, it, it's to me, it just seems like the most obvious obvious step to do in this would just to continue to focus on on Democrats, focus on Obamacare. But the people who say don't take the bait, don't get deflected are being deflected and are completely taking the bait. And anybody who suggests otherwise, they're somehow raked over the coals for it. Uh, Yes, there's much too much focus on fratricide (laughs) rather than homicide when it comes to the Democrats. And in a weird way, it, it is doing exactly what we hate about the real rhinos and the real establishment. What I hate about them, (laughs) most of all, um, is their proclivity to go on television and attack other Republicans. Mm. Um, McCain and Lindsey Graham being being two of the the prime offenders. Uh, And yeah, it's easy if you're a Republican to attack other Republicans, because the mainstream media is going to eat that up with a spoon. Oh, we'll give you prime time to attack another Republican. And and weirdly, the Tea Partiers, some of them, some of them, not obviously not us, um, are often the mirror image of this. It's, uh, do you think anybody in the mainstream media cares that an alleged Tea Partier is running against Mitch McConnell? Fantastic. They love him. They're writing puff pieces about this guy. Um, so, so... Right. I mean, don't not only don't imitate the bad things that liberals do, don't imitate the bad things that rhinos do. Oh, amen to that. Ann Coulter, her latest book, Never Trust a Liberal Over Three, Especially a Republican. Great Christmas gift. Go out and get it, folks. Ann, always a pleasure. I'm so glad that you're out there and you're saying what you do, especially when you go on Hannity and everything else. Never, ever stop or we'll cry. <laughs> right back at you, Dana. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Take care.